This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. It's one o'clock on a Monday afternoon, so you must be watching Think Tech Hawaii, Research in Manoa. I'm your host, Pete McGuinness-Mark. And every week we bring you updates on some interesting research which has been done in the Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology. And unfortunately, this is my last show for a few months because I've got to teach next semester. But uh, I thought it was a really good idea to actually bring in as our final guest of the year, Dr. Robert Wright, who is the interim director of HIGP, to sort of explain to us some more overview kind of topics as well as fill in some of the missing gaps which we haven't had in the last few months. So, Rob, welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. It's a pleasure to have you here. You're my boss, so I have to defer to you on a number of things. But uh, let me just start the discussion. We know that there's the Geology and Geophysics Department at the university. Explain to us what is the difference between HIGP and the Geology Department. So, historically, uh Many professors in the current ge geology and geophysics department had split appointments with the geophysics back in the day, 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago. Uh, two things. First of all, HIGP does a lot more planetary science. So the P part of HIGP kind of span off from a planetary science group, which had its origins kind of up in Manoa, the Institute for Astronomy back in the early 80s, moved down to the Sinclair basement, and then the P part of HIGP joined with the G part, HIGP was born in the mid-90s. Uh, so HIGP has a, has a much stronger planetary science focus. Uh, 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 strictly, geology and geophysics is an instructional department, whereas HIGP is an organized research unit. Uh, this, uh, the consequence of this is twofold in terms of how, how we function maybe differently. So geology and geophysics uh, is, is an instructional unit. HIGP, most of our faculty are research faculty. Now, nobody in HIGP receives more than three quarters of their salary from the university. Uh, we have 41 faculty. Almost all of them have to find one quarter of their annual salary from external grants and contracts. Many of the faculty get no support from us. We've had many uh, of our guests over the last few months. They seem like geologists to me. Um, is that somewhat different? Is there a special theme that underlines the, the kind of research which Institute does? So our focus on planetary science in particular has led us to uh, more in the direction of developing our own technology to make the measurements that we use to do science. So if you're studying the planets, it's very hard to go out and collect rocks. What you have to do is design instruments which will go on spacecraft which will be launched into space, which will go into orbit around a planet, and then make measurements of the chemistry of the, of the atmosphere, or the chemistry of the rocks and minerals of the planet's surface. So much of our research is in technology development. NASA funds, NASA has several different programs across the terrestrial and planetary sciences aimed at uh, uh, developing prototype instruments which might one day make it into space. So you come up with an idea for making a measurement. Now most of NASA's, most of the things that NASA launches into the solar system are designed to do one thing, and that's to measure the chemistry of things without touching them. If you can do that, you can work out an awful lot about mm -hmm. the history of a planet and its current state. And, and you mentioned NASA. Is that the primary funding source for the Institute, or do you get people getting, like, National Science Foundation or other kinds of people? So our primary funding is, is, is from NASA. Uh, but many of the things that we do for NASA also have rollovers and applications which other sponsors are interested in. So for example, if you're making a device which measures the chemistry of the gas, gases in the Martian atmosphere, for example, there are lots of applications on Earth where people are interested in measuring gases in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. uh, so we also get Department of Defense money, uh, not for developing weapons, uh, but for strategic awareness. There are many applications where it's, it's useful to know if there's an explosive which is giving off some kind of vapor. Right, because Margot Edwards allow has you been to on find the show those in kind the past of, uh, and she talked about underwater techniques. Is that something the Institute is still working on? Uh, one, of our, one of our faculty, uh, Anna Pam Misra, is currently developing a, a laser-based instrument uh, which can detect 
targets of interest through a length of water. Uh, most of the work we do is, I mean, I, I, have, I have research projects funded to measure volcanic gases coming out of Kilauea volcano. Uh, I'd say Anapam and Shiv Sharma are the, well, I believe, the only people who are currently making instruments which use light passed through the water column to work out the chemistry of targets that are submerged. Okay, so it's technology development as well as just making scientific measurements. Yeah, I mean, the technology de development is important. I mean, I said earlier there are, you know, most of NASA's instruments measure the chemistry of things without touching them, but there are many ways to skin a cat. And the key is making instruments which make, make the science measurements scientists need with more accuracy and precision, but at the same time making them smaller and smaller and more power efficient such that they don't cost as much to launch. Okay. And, and how long has the Institute been in existence? Uh, so the Institute was established in 1959, uh, and... Before the space program, presumably we weren't uh, uh, getting this. Yeah, I mean, I assume then. it was on the books uh, yeah, at that yeah. period of time. So, I mean, it, but it's not just, HIGP doesn't just do planetary science. I mean, the G part of HIGP is focused on uh, uh, terrestrial geophysics and geology, but then also uh, one of our main roles and the reasons for our existence is to provide service to the state in, in matters of uh, the geophysics of Hawaii. So this is, you know, we've had Rhett Butler previously talking about tsunamis. I think Gerard Fryer was here a couple of months ago talking about tsunamis as well. Is that the kind of role that HIGP plays? Uh, tsunamis is a, is a focus. So another faculty member, James Foster, uh, was in the news within the last couple of years because he developed a system for using GPS receivers on uh, cargo ships to measure the height of ocean waves to maybe provide an early warning tsunami, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. tsunami warning system. Uh, so tsunamis is a big focus. Uh, we also have, uh, we've recently made two joint hires with the Water Resources Research Center uh, associated with a, an NSF funded project called uh, the Ikiwai project, which is basically aimed at discovering uh, if you like, new resources or better managing the, the resources of drinking water in the right. state of Hawaii, and again, which is clearly important to the people Nicole of Hawaii. Nicole Lautzi uh, was on the show early this year. We had Niels Grobe last week. So Ikiwa is part of the HIGP effort or uh, their faculty members involved in this kind of effort. Yeah, and we also have two other faculty members, uh, uh, Jenny Engels and Barbara Bruno, who are working more on the educational aspects are trying to get uh, uh, students from underrepresented groups involved in science via the, the Ikiwai project. So would you count this sort of thing as um, service to the state or is it outreach to the broader community? You know, how does this differ from what the uh, geology and geophysics department is doing on instruction? Uh, well, I mean, they're, they're both. I mean, the G and G department do a lot, or an awful lot of their research is also a service to the state. Mm -hmm. uh, now, our instructional role is reduced compared to the geology and geophysics department. But as I said earlier, the way, the way we make up for that is by, you know, getting more research funding. Uh, service to the state. Uh, certainly, some of the some of the things we do are, are obvious that they're relevant to the state. Other things are less obvious. Uh, but the grants that we get in to study stardust. For example, mm -hmm. Hope uh, she was on. Yeah, so Hope, Gary, Sasha, Crot, Gary Huss. So uh, the uh, the relevance to the state of those things might not be particularly obvious, but they are relevant because all of the NASA grant money that they get to fund those projects is an influx of money into the state of Hawaii, into the Hawaiian economy, which wouldn't come here if mm -hmm. they didn't get that money. Secondly, it establishes HIGP as a world leader in in those fields, cosmic chemistry. Uh, Thirdly, we, we, uh, we graduate uh, a good number of graduate students who go on to become leaders in the space industry uh, and the space sector themselves. So for example, I mean, one of your former students is now the principal investigator of a... Mark Robinson, for yeah, example, yeah. in yeah, so uh, lots uh, of Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. Yeah, yeah so we're, we're well known for it and we train them well and they go on and get good jobs. Can you put some numbers behind this? You say there's like just about 40 faculty um, in general terms, what's the annual budget? Oh. Uh, we, uh, so last year we raised about $8 million in external grants and contracts, primarily from NASA, DOD, uh, DOE, Department of Energy, so Don Thomas does geothermal mm -hmm. work, as does Nicole Lamps. Uh, and we probably, 
Uh, at the, we're about a three to one multiplier in terms of the funding that the state give us. We go out and get, you know, his, historically we've always gone out and get so the three state other might dollars from provide outside. two two and a half million in salaries and you, about three about three, three and you say you raise eight or so. That's a pretty good return on the investment, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think it is. I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know where else you would get you know, three to one on an annual basis. I mean, it's been like that for for, for decades. Certainly not my mutual funds, put it that way. Or Bernie Madoff. <laughs> I mean, he may have offered it. We all yeah. know where he is now. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so um, we've been in existence since 1959. We've got a number of faculty members that have continued to do this huge range of of research interests. Over the last few months, we've had a great diversity of faculty coming in and some of the students sort of thing. So you know, is, is this uh, typical at the University at Manoa or is this kind of unusual? Uh, I think research intensive departments are not unusual at universities on the mainland. I mean, they're not the norm. I mean, you know, universities are primarily places where things are discovered and new knowledge is created. Mm -hmm. Uh, that those discoveries and, and that knowledge is disseminated to the world, and we also train young minds. I mean, that's the that's the focus of, of all. We, that's the focus of a university, right? Yeah. Now, any university will have research specialisms in which they're particularly competitive for raising extramural grants and contracts. Now, in those departments, and this is true on the mainland as it is anywhere, in those departments, the faculty will will have a lighter instructional administrative load because they're expected go and, and raise the external dollar. And HHEP is part of School of Ocean, Earth, Science and Technology, correct? So yeah. who, who does the faculty actually collaborate with? Is it just internal to HHEP or do they have collaborations across campus? So uh, there, are, there, there are collaborations within SOAS, within the issues of SOAS, uh, but also at the scale of the wider university and increasingly so. So recently, uh, uh, Hope Ishii, who's a cosmic chemist, was part of a group which was funded by uh, the Manoa Vice Chancellor for Research uh, to develop a, a center of excellence or a, uh, an instructional uh, uh, center of excellence for material science. So uh, we have a transmission electron microscope in the basement which can image individual atoms. Now, a geologist might use that to study uh, uh, interplanetary dust particles, but uh, people who are interested in building and developing ultra-hard materials which have industrial and, uh, and other kind of application are also interested in making the same measurements. So HOPE is working with a group from the Natural Energy Institute which is in our basement and also physics and also chemistry to try and, to try and pool our intellectual resources to take this asset and make it more productive at the scale of right. the camp. And also when we had Carolyn Kaplan on the show, the kind of kit she's using she had this huge, huge iron microprobe. It seemed to me as if that's, you know, is it unique or are there many of them at other universities? Does HIGP have sort of this specialized equipment in various disciplines? So the, the, the microprobe is, is not unique, but they are by no means common. Okay. <laughs> I mean, this, that was a very... I, I would imagine so. It's that, quite expensive. That was a very expensive piece of kit, which was, again, I mean, the university had to pay some towards it, but it was funded to a large extent by the Keck Foundation, as well as by NASA. Mm -hmm. The Transmission Electron Microscope, the university uh, invested in that facility, but it was also a large investment on the part of NASA. Now, NASA invests in us because we're good at what we do. They, NASA, you know, NASA and Keck don't just go around handing out millions of dollars to any old department at any old university. Uh, so uh, yeah, we do, have, we do have quite a lot of specialized equipment. And as I said, if, if it doesn't exist, then our faculty have a have a good track record of building it themselves. Okay, and you know, one of the other items which I've been impressed by is that there's a group called the Hawaii Space Flight Lab, which also has some pretty unusual facilities in the basement of the uh, school's building, right? Yeah, so the, the Space Flight Lab kind of started in 2006, which was kind of when it's first established, and then uh, two years ago uh, launched its own rocket from PMRF over in Kauai. The Pacific Missile Range facility. Using yeah. a, uh, a launch vehicle that uh, the, the design of which was led by uh, Luke Flynn and his team, HIGP. Uh, they installed the launch pad on PMRF, 
They shipped over the rail launcher. They had a spacecraft which was built in the post building on the Manoa campus in HIGP. That's, so that project's a collaboration with the, the Department of Engineering as well, College of Engineering. Uh, so, you know, to almost backtrack to your earlier question, we don't just live in isolation. So a lot of the things we do, we can collaborate with physics, we can collaborate with engineering. The IKIY project, I mean, as you know, there are collaborations there with economics. Yes, uh, and Nicole and Niels have been telling us in previous episodes some of the innovations. So. Yeah, yeah, so we don't, we don't exist in isolation. HSFL is, uh, I mean, that's, no other university has launched its own rocket. Now, uh, the, the, rocket, uh, uh, the rocket failed after a minute and a half. I guess one thing people don't understand is the first time you launch a rocket, it always fails. <laughs> the first one always fails. Rob, I'm going to have to stop you here because we're getting uh, ready for a break. But when we come back, I'd like to get some perspective on where might the Institute be going and what its track record in the past been. So let me just remind the viewers, you are watching Think Tech Hawaii, Research in Manoa. I'm your host, Pete McGuinness-Mark, and my guest today is my boss, Rob Wright, who is the Interim Director of HIGP. And we'll be back in about a minute. So see you then. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? And they told me they were making music. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii, Research in Manoa. I'm your host, Pete McGuinness-Mark, and my guest today is Interim HIGP Director, Rob Wright. Welcome back again, Rob. Um, I guess one of the signs of a successful research group at any university is the quality of the students that graduate. Can you just give us some idea of, you know, we've had Casey Hannibal on, we've had Bill Bonnie on. They seem to be really top flight. How would you gauge HIGP compared to some of the other national programs? Uh, well, HIGP, uh, we have good faculty who train good students. They do interesting things. They learn a lot when they're with us. Uh, quite often, they, they, what they learn straddles uh, the disciplines of science and engineering, which makes them employable in a whole different range of uh, fields. Uh, getting high-profile jobs doing what they were trained to do is is a sign so, that so where do well. they go once they leave UH? So uh, we've, from people we've graduated in the last 10 years, we have at least two who are now uh, working over at Johns Hopkins in the Applied Physics Lab, okay. involved at high levels in various NASA uh, planetary missions. Uh, uh, only recently, one of our postdocs, David Trang, was selected by NASA to be on the uh, OSIRIS-REx uh, science data analysis team. So Cyrus Rex launched next year. We'll return material. And that's from, a space mission, right? Yeah. So it's going to be launched next year. We'll return uh, samples back to Earth from uh, from from an asteroid. David's been selected to be on the team to analyze that material. I mean, that's a you know that's a big deal. Not material is going to come. Not much is that's going right. to come back. And they when, when he came on the it. show in the fall of this year. He was just hoping to be selected. So this is a new discovery. He's or one a new of a thing. relatively small handful of people that were selected to. Yeah, I think to twelve look were at that supported. Material. Yeah, uh, one of my former postdocs who graduated with Paul Lucy and HIGP, Sarah Kreitz. She's now working at the Japanese Space Agency over near uh, over near Tokyo, and she's involved in all sorts of Japanese space missions, lunar missions. And, like and then, I mean, and this goes back in time. We mentioned Mark Robinson earlier, but there. I mean, a whole bunch of people right. who flipped through so HIGP. But Bob Brown, who built a camera that went into orbit on Cassini around Saturn, for example, Lucy McFadden, Beth Clark, they've all Fraser been... Finale, so, Tom McCall. So does uh, this mean that most of HIGP students, 
when they graduate continue their research or do they go into teaching or uh, do they disappear into industry and make lots of money? Uh, I mean, some go into industry. Academia is a broad-based pyramid with a narrow tip, right? So there are more MS students than there are PhD spots. There are more PhD graduates than there are postdocs. There are more yeah. postdocs than there are faculty. Uh, so not everybody can end up doing what we train them to do, but what we train them to do is applicable to many other things than simply studying tsunamis or studying the chemistry of the surface of mercury. You know, right. they, they learn. Uh, they, they can all program when they yeah. come out. They're all very new. I was amazed uh, when Casey Hannibal was on the show. Her diverse range of experience. You know, she was flying this balloon in Antarctica looking at microwave telescopes. And then she's trying to be an astronaut. Things like that. It's, it's yeah, well, amazing. I guess our contacts open up avenues for our graduate students. Yeah. Because of the, the, the esteem with, with which the HIG program is, is held, we collaborate with we get a lot of funding from NASA. We collaborate with a lot of people from top universities on the mainland. And that opens up opportunities for, the, for our graduate students. Hmm. So in the past, they've been highly successful. But where do you see the future going? Is it with, with planetary missions? President Trump says we go back to the moon, for example. Or is it more of the direct service to the state? I mean, I think both. I mean, NASA's not going to go away. Uh, the aspects of our planetary science or, or terrestrial science research, I mean, I primarily use satellites not to study the planets, but to study the Earth, study mm -hmm. volcanoes on Earth. Uh, the, the, the research that we do uh, is funded, and I don't see any reason why it's not going to be funded in the future. NASA, NASA is well funded. Uh, the DOD and the DOE are well funded. Uh, so I, I see us continuing in those areas. Uh, David's selection uh, just proves that that there's a demand that, dem that his skills aren't necessarily required for another five years, but he's funded by NASA now. Right. right. In terms of service to the state, uh, the state is going to face an increasing number of environmental challenges. Now, uh, you know, the Ikiwai project's a prime example. I mean, we, you know, deserts are not deserted because they're hot. They're deserted because there's no drinkable water or usable <laughs> water. Yeah. Now, uh, we're surrounded by water. Unfortunately, we can't use it for anything unless we try and take the salt out, which requires a catastrophic amount of power. So finding new drinking water resources is, is essential to the state of Hawaii. Uh, linked with, uh, the, with the drinking water question, or the groundwater question, is the geothermal energy question. Now, uh, you know, Hawaii is a, we, we import a lot of oil. We use a lot of non-renewable. Uh, it's expensive, as everybody knows. We hear on the news every morning how much a gallon of gas and try and fill up the car. Uh, you know, Don Thomas over on the Big Island has, has had a long history in looking for geothermal energy resources. Uh, for no, not, not for a sinister reason, just because it'd be nice if we could generate more of our energy oh, locally. It covers the base load as the state's trying to become 100% renewable by 2050. And it's a job creator. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's a win-win. Now, you have to be sensitive to how you do it, but it's not... It, it's a somewhat noble. And, and of course, one of the other themes running through this program over the last few months has been the impacts of climate change. Water is one issue. Are there any other climate change related activities, like sort of sea level rise or coral reef? Uh, certainly in SOAST, uh, and certainly within, within the wider university. Uh, sea level rise, uh, there's a large sea level rise group in the Department of Geology. In yeah. Geophysics. Yeah, Matt Chip Barbie Fletcher came on. Group. Yeah, yeah. Chip, yeah. Uh, I'd say in HAGP, we. I mean, we've we have a we have an affiliate faculty member who uses satellites to study the urban heat island effect. So, the warming of cities during the day by virtue of the excess energy that they produce, which is bad for for human health. Yeah. Uh, but we, I'd say, our, our service to the state environmentally is linked largely with the water resource question also. Geothermal energy. Geothermal and earthquakes. And geothermal. So uh, the, the geophysical environment would yes. be the earthquakes. The geophysical and the environment. And, and, then the and then we've got upcoming, back to the planetary side, we've got upcoming missions, I believe, Sarah Fajan, uh, Shiv Sharma, and Anapan Misra. They're engaged in this new fantastic mission to Mars in three years' time. Yeah, so we've, we've, we've always had people on NASA science team. You know, NASA. Uh, when they're planning a mission, they ask people's opinion on what it should do. 
Once the mission is launched, they ask for scientists to bid competitively to be funded to analyze the data. So we've always had a mixture of people on science teams in various uh, guises. Uh, Sarah is basically going to be a roaming geologist on Mars. So Sarah, they, they have a, 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 just a regular kind of camera on the, on the Mars 2020 mission. Uh, now a field geologist, a traditional field geologist, would, would wander around with a, with a lens and their notebook and they'd look at rocks and they'd make notes and they'd get the microscope out and look up close. Sarah's job is going to be to try and be a virtual geologist on Mars using this hand lens uh, imager. And I should point out that the PI on that experiment is another one of our former grad students, right? Jim Bell, Yeah. Arizona yeah, yeah. State. Uh, now, Shiv and Anapam are doing something quite different. They're not looking at the texture or the position of rocks and whether the rocks are layered. They're, they're part of a team that's building an instrument to measure the chemistry of rocks using a, a technique that they've been working on for a long time. And they've, they've through their uh, brain power, they've managed to work out a way of making it make precise measurements from a very small package that can go on a planetary rover. So it, it sounds as if you know, the best times for HAGP are in the future, correct? I think so. Yeah. Uh, by virtue of how successful we've been in the past, I mean we, you know, like Build, uh, building on previous experience. Yeah, we're trusted to do well. We're trusted to to, to succeed on projects that people fund us to, to do. Well, this is your institute, and let me just say, as the host of Think Tech over the last six months, it's been a great pleasure to have many of your faculty and your students come and be on the show because it's really been exciting. Actually, learning a lot about the kind of research which they're doing, as well as the value to the state, not only in terms of direct relevance, but also the economic drivers. So thank you again, Rob. I'm afraid we're running out of time. Thank you, Pete. So let me just remind the viewers, you have been watching Think Tech Hawaii Research in Manoa. I've been your host, Pete mcginnis Mark, and as I said at the beginning of the show, this is my last show for probably about six months. I actually have to go and teach one of the classes for Rob. Uh, we hope to have a new uh, guest post coming in in the new year, but until we return, probably in the summer, thank you for watching and continue to watch Think Tech Hawaii Research in Manoa. Goodbye for now.